think this is a fish that I saw ghost in. Oh, hello. Nice little imitation. It's got a lovely rattling. Savage here, SG4, medium game, 7-2. Whoa, Jesus Christ. Right, I've literally just seen a pike. <sighs> Get in. Right, welcome to a new video. We are back on the bank, but I'm still sat in the van at the moment. I am parked up at the lake, but I'm just waiting a little bit um, for, it to, for it to get a little bit lighter because today I'm gonna to be doing a morning's lure fishing. And um, as per normal, I've left really early to try and get to the lake before first light, but didn't think about the fact that I'm gonna be lure fishing. So I could do with a little bit of light before I get started. Normally I'd be potentially dead baiting obviously in the warm months i'd be carping so it doesn't matter and normally i want to get fishing and get set up before it starts to get light so obviously that tends to be a prime bite time but when you're lure fishing you can do with a little bit of light as it allows you to see that you're working the law properly you can see the line and also you can see if you get any follows which actually is a really really important thing when you're fishing for um predators with lures now I'm up in the Cotswolds and I'm going to be doing a morning fishing on um, quite a deep gravel pit. My main target is going to be pike. I fished this a couple of times dead baiting, very, very short sessions. And um, I've actually lost a couple of fish and I feel like I need to get a bit of revenge on this place. So I'm going to try and just cover the whole lake, try and do as many laps as I can around the lake in the time that I've got. Like I said, I've got a morning. And then um, I'm probably going to be either going home or potentially going on to another venue. It really depends on um, what's going on back home. But um, hopefully it'll give me a chance to be able to get out again this evening and fish another venue and do a separate video. If not, I might have to get, get going and head home. But anyway, we haven't got too, um, too long to wait now. The light is starting to come through quite nicely. So I think I'm going to get out of the van. Get the um get the rod out and uh we'll have a little walk around and let's see if we can catch one for the camera. So uh yeah, let's go and have a look. Right, let's have a go. I've literally just seen a pike just ghost out of this margin. Come on. Pretty nice fish as well. I just spoke to a guy who's carping and he was telling me apparently someone had a, um, a mid 20 recently. He said, he don't know if it's a rumour or not, but apparently that's what's a uh, that's the word on the street, is that um, someone's had a, a good 20 pounder out there, which is um, promising. I mean, that fish was probably a nice double. Am I gonna am I gonna catch a big fish? Am I gonna catch a big fish? Daddy, that's right. Is Daddy gonna catch a big fish? Yes, yes he is. 
Yes, yes. Oh, look at that Are you eating the phone? <laughs> anyway, I've just put on a, a different bait, so it's a bit of a, a sort of roach imitation. I had a little pike imitation on to start with, and I thought oh, I'll give this a go. Got my new Savage here SG4 medium game 72. This is um 12 to 35 gram. Lovely, lovely rod this. Right, just gonna check. Oh my god, the movement on that is absolutely incredible. God, it looks amazing. That actually looks like a, a, a fish just sort of gliding through the water. It's only a four gram weight on it though, so I'm not quite sure how, how well it's going to sink. It is very deep in here, out in the main body of the lake. It genuinely looks like an injured fish. So I've fished uh, about five or six swims so far in the central spit of the lake. Um, not had any follows, not had any hits. I've seen one fish which was sat on the marginal shelf and it swam off as I went into the swim, it obviously heard me. Um, other than that, It's been a very unproductive. Luckily, there's not too many anglers carp in, so there is a bit of space for me to walk around. Um, in the summer, uh, spring summer on here, it's probably near enough impossible to do something like this. I mean, I don't tend to fish for pike in the warmer, warmer weather anyway, but. I'd imagine it would be near enough impossible because there'd just be no no availability in swims, nowhere to nowhere to be able to actually walk and and fish. You might have one or two one or two gaps in the sort of more unpopular zones, but generally speaking, it's probably going to be nowhere for you to really actually uh, have a go. But um. I haven't been fishing for that long really, I've been fishing for about an hour, maybe, maybe an hour and a half, or some up around that anyway, but uh, yeah, it's been very, very unproductive so far, but um, the errors I really thought I might have had something have obviously produced absolutely nothing. Not a sausage. So basically, I've gone along this bank all the way up to there. So I've fished, I think, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, that's six swims. I've gone up to there, there's a guy carping on the end, he's bivvied up. So I've missed the last sort of two or three swims, so I don't go near him. Um, there used to be a gap in there, um, just where these birds are, but they've blocked it off with a tree, which is a shame, because that's actually where I had a, a fish pick up a dead bait. Um, and then I've tried that one there, and obviously the one just behind this tree. So, that's pretty much all the swims on this spit. Done. I think there's a gap in here. Uh, yeah, there's a little gap here.
and we'll have a little go in there. There's a guy carping on the other side, so I won't go too far out. More than likely, he's fishing half the way across, as you as you do when you're a carping. Whoa, Jesus Christ! Stand back a bit. Lovely clean bottom down there. Right, next lure. Little perch pattern. I don't even know what brand this is. I think it might be an ESP. Anyone know? Nice little imitation. It's got a lovely rattling. Probably be really good for, um, for your Xander. I'm not too sure if it's a sinking or floating. But I thought I'd Try another one, mix it up a little bit. So it's got a little bit of weight in those ball bearings, so I imagine it might sink. Oh no, it doesn't, it floats. Well, we'll crank that along just to see what it does. Oh, it feels like it might go quite deep. Seems to be going through it, a nice, nice depth. In a jig head, heavy jig head, 30 gram near the top end of this um, rated rod. Basically, just something that's going to get down nice and deep as um, it is a very deep lake. I'm basically chucking it out close to the far bank and just slow retrieving, or steady retrieving, like that. Little pulls now and then. And it's obviously working a lot closer to the bottom. Trying to cover large areas of water now. This, um, this section is very open, flat, not, not a lot of weed. Um, I've seen something, I'm not quite sure what it was, I couldn't quite tell that something has um, bolted out from this tree down here and gone out into open water. Um, and I was actually in the swim for a while when it actually happened, so I don't know whether someone has to swam off from being underneath that cover. I can't imagine I've made it bolt because you would have thought I've, I've been here for a while you would have thought um, it would have bolted quite early on but yeah strange I couldn't quite tell what it was it might have been a tench right the battery had run out just as a pike chased it in which is typical so the battery's probably going to cut out I think this is the fish that I saw ghosting out with a snag I was just saying about and I literally followed it in, didn't grab it, but I managed to uh, get in. Oh, happy days. Basically, it followed it in, didn't grab it, and I uh, just tweaked it on the bottom, and he just sucked it in off the bottom. 
really good tactic that. Well, it's taken a while, but finally, I've got a fish. Not a monster, but uh, nice to uh, nice to get a bite. It followed it in from out in open water, um, a shad on a 30 gram jig head. I cast it all the way three quarters of the way across. I've just been working it back and I saw it follow it in with the um, podroids on. And uh, yeah, it literally sat looking at it and I tweaked it a few times on the bottom, just let it sit there, tweaked it a little bit and it's just engulfed it. And um, happy days, obviously not a big one, but uh, nice to get a fish. So happy days. Right, so, oh hello. Oh, there's a bike right down there under my feet. So, don't know if you saw that, but a pike just come out from underneath that tree. It wasn't very big, it's probably about the size of a, the one I just had. But uh, what I was going to say is that was a nice, uh, nice result anyway, having a fish. It wasn't very big, might have been about five pound maybe, maybe six pound, not quite sure, but only a little jack. But I'd switch to a jig head, 30 gram jig head, where the um with a shad, perch imitation shad. Basically it just gets down right to the bottom. So that I can search out the deep water. And that fish followed it all the way in. And I ended up actually ended up fishing it static on the bottom and just twitching it and he engulfed it off the deck it's actually a really good little little tip when um when a fish is following it in don't lift it up towards the surface as it's just not not instinctive really for a fish to do that you want to let it drop to the bottom and then just put a slowly little bit of twitches in it just to slowly sort of tweak it back along the bottom it, it works well with a jig head because the hook's obviously facing up so it doesn't get snagged up but if you've uh, if you're using a um, a hard bait obviously with, with treble potentially hanging down off of it it might not work so well but always bring the bring the lure right as close to the bank as you can because you just do not know there could be a fish following it in and you want to just fish it all the way up to the bank because the fish could be following it from further out and then um, if you see a fish following it just let it drop give it a couple of twitches and nine times out of ten it will uh, and we'll grab hold of it. So what I do when I'm casting out is I, I basically fan cast through the swim. So I either go right to left or left to right and I just make a cast. So I sort of go one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, for example. And I'll just make a few casts like that, sort of go from right, right to left, then go left to right. Do that several times. Maybe do the odd extra cast in areas that I think potentially looks more interesting. So, for example, here I've got this tree where I can go more 
to the side, around the back of it, and tweak one past this overhanging tree. It seems quite a lot of the pike so far that I've seen are actually quite close in up under the trees. Very deep. I guess 12 to 15 foot at least out there. Well, I don't know if I've showed you this, but this is what I had that fish on. So a 30 gram jig head. I've got 40 pound wire, 40 pound braid. I've got a perch imitation shad, which has got like some glitter in it. And it's a little bit tall and battered now, if I'm honest, but still doing a job. Now this in here, pretty tasty. Some lovely overhanging trees in this swim. There's a lovely gravel patch down there. And that's right in the summer for the old uh, carp and tench. That, would you believe, my um, my missus got me that for Christmas once. That's a bit of a stocking filler. But a little bit too big that um that bait for this uh for this rod a couple of weedless weedless setups in here but what we'll do is we'll take this off and we'll put that on here been used a bit as well. We need to get some uh, different shirts. Uh, I'll be all day for a couple of cars. It's a bit brighter now. Let's go for a long one. What kind of angle is better? Is it better seeing what I'm doing on the real end? Like that. Or is it better having it higher so you can see the rod tip and what's going on at the pond wall? Probably better like that, really, isn't it? <laughs> Look at this big open swim. It's like a big, big open beachy swim. I'm going to be able to do a couple of long casts down this bank. This looks very deep. Yeah, I should be able to whack. Quite a long way down here. Nice. Sounds like a tractor. Yep. a big bank of weed out there. It's clearly a, a bank of this like silt weed. It's real fine. Almost feels slimy where it's so fine. Oh, oh it's weed again. God, every time that hits that weed, I think that's a fish. 
Oh, hello. What the hell's going on here? Oh, bloody weed! <laughs> oh dear, I thought it was a fish. Oh, that bloody weed. Right then, that's the end of the session then. I've got all the kit loaded back in the van. Um, I've just had myself a coffee and um, just um, had a bit of a chat to the missus just to see how the little one is. But um, I'm actually gonna go on to another venue now and just fish the um, afternoon on there. It's only down the road. But um, one fish anyway this morning on the um, on the deep pit. Bit, oh, I don't know, not disappointing because it was nice to get a fish. Um, I saw a couple of other jacks as well, but didn't see anything big. Spoke to the bailiff, who has also confirmed that there's been quite a big fish caught. He said it was about 27, which is a cracking fish, especially for a, a gravel pit. Um, so I might have to come back and have a go dead baiting because I think the guy that caught it was um, fishing dead baits. Um, so I might have to come back and have a go again for them um, with the deads. But um, it's a nice morning anyway, nice to have a fish. Um, shame the GoPro cut out at the start of the, um, of, well, as the fish was approaching it. it. Literally cut out just as that fish was um, starting to follow it in. So I managed to turn it on again. There was just enough juice, I think, to capture um, to capture a uh, land in it. But um, yeah, a bit annoying. Spend the whole day cap capturing footage of absolutely nothing happens. And then when it actually comes to the time where something does happen, the battery runs out. But um, anyway, I'm going to um, get on the road now. Hopefully you like the video. If you have, then please subscribe to the channel. Check out the social media showing at the bottom of the screen. I regularly um, put content on social media, more so onto Instagram, update on the bank in the session as well. So give us a follow on there. Worth definitely um, giving us a follow and keeping an update on what we're doing. But anyway, hopefully you've liked the video. If you have, give it a thumbs up. And until next time, get out there, enjoy your fishing, and be lucky. I'll see you in the next video.